Just let me know how are you able to see the presentation and I'm audible clearly. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. As I mentioned, this industrial hygiene, which is completely talking about the, the environmental hazards and their associated control measures to prevent the, the human health related issues. So it deals about the ill effects or diseases on health, bodily disorders or mal judgment, medical remedies to remove the occupational illness, preventive measures to avoid the diseases or maintain good health, and improvement of nutrition and also general physical and also mental health of the workers. So these are the areas where this industrial hygiene, where majorly focusing on the VTG in the Rakalena what is the industrial hygiene and the work chest on them and a job will around them we are the loop what is some money China never know of the tool so my occupational ill health and I'm on day when you know when you are a man it is a funny daughter of China job will what you have to control measures Industrial hygiene attempts to eliminate and minimize the exposure of the environmental and also work hazards on human or public health by engineering controls and good housekeeping. And also keep the workplace environmental clean, pollution-free, hygiene, hygienic while occupational health deals with effects of exposure that penetrates human health, gives a medicines into improve in and also pre-employment and also periodical medical examinations. So what will happen? It majorly focuses on the environmental hazards and it will try to control by taking proper engineering controls and also good housekeeping and keeping the workplace clean. Workplace clean in the sense, fresh air, comfortable environment like temperature, no fumes or no dust and comfortable sitting or working posture. So that what will happen? You will not feel any fatigue okay and also it anticipates the preventive or pre-employment and periodical med employment medical examinations this industrial hygiene also focuses on pre-employment so that for any employment definitely they'll do the uh, medical examination for the people and also in between they will do the periodical medical examinations. For periodical medical examinations I can give you they will do uh, eyesight and they will do audiometry and uh, pulmonary chest x-ray etc based on the nature of the activity they are performing. So in yes sir, Dean Valla. Company will join him with the monkey medical examination just on taro giant and tarvata food on based on periodicity I test at the monkey if it is above 40 years they'll do once in six months below 40 years once in 12 months or audiometry they'll do once in six months if the people are working in high noise areas Occupational health also known as occupational medicine aims at identifying occupational diseases in early stages. There we have seen industrial hygiene. Now we are talking about occupational health. What exactly it is? Identifying occupational diseases in an early stage. The industrial hygiene is aimed at identifying and rectifying the causes leading to occupational diseases. These both are interlinking. Here we will talk about the identification of diseases at early stages but industrial hygiene what it happens it will identify and rectify the causes which is leading to occupational disease and they intend occupational health and 
పనిలో పని ద్వారా వచ్చే వ్యాధుల గురించి ఎర్లీ స్టేజ్ లో ఐడెంటిఫై చేయడానికి ఉపయోగపడితే ఇండస్ట్రియల్ హైజీన్ అనేది ఈ యొక్క పనిలో వచ్చే జబ్బులు గల కారణాలు వాటి యొక్క కంట్రోల్ మెజర్స్ అంటే వాటిని ఎలా మనం ప్రివెంట్ చేయాలి అంటే జరగకుండా చూసుకోవాలన్న దాని గురించి మనకి ఈ ఇండస్ట్రియల్ హైజీన్ అనేది మాట్లాడుతుంది బై ద టైమ్ అండ్ ఆక్యుపేషనల్ డిసీజ్ ఈజ్ ఐడెంటిఫైడ్ ఇట్ మే బీ టూ లేట్ దేర్ ఫోర్ ప్రివెన్షన్ అండ్ కంట్రోల్ ఫ్యాక్టర్స్ లీడింగ్ టు ఆక్యుపేషనల్ ఇల్నెస్ అండ్ ఆల్సో డిసీజ్ ఈజ్ ఇస్ ద బెస్ట్ ఆప్షన్ అల్టిమేట్లీ ఇట్ ఇంక్రీజెస్ ద లైఫ్ స్పాన్ సో వాట్ విల్ హ్యాపెన్ దేర్ ఫోర్ ప్రివెన్షన్ అండ్ కంట్రోల్ ఆర్ ద ఫ్యాక్టర్స్ విచ్ ఆర్ మోర్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ even if no occupational diseases has occurred the hazard at the workplace reduces the life of the exposed people from few days to few years therefore industrial hygiene practices is always useful and also most desired to assess make and also workplace safe stop decreasing the precious life span it means you will expose with the various environmental hazards in a workplace so that what will happen your life span will come down from the days to the years so in such case what we have to do is we have to implement all the industrial hygiene best practices to prevent such exposure to avoid reducing our life span the difference with public health so there is again a public health that is in different occupational health deals with the man in relation to his work and the working environment inside the workplace both physically and mentally whereas public health deals with the men in relation in the environment in society outside the workplace and the hazards such as air and water pollution noise nutrition also infections may affect his health so here they are talking about an other thing industrial hygiene talks about the the person and his work within the premises and ante ante oka vyakti తను చేసే పని అంటే ఎలాంటి ప్రదేశాల్లో పనిచేస్తున్నాడు అందులో ఉండే ప్రమాదాల గురించి ఈ ఇండస్ట్రియల్ హైజిన్ మాట్లాడితే పబ్లిక్ హెల్త్ ఏంటంటే ఇట్ టాక్స్ అబౌట్ ది ద పీపుల్ విచ్ ఆర్ అవుట్ సైడ్ ఆర్ హూ ఆర్ అవుట్ సైడ్ ద ప్రమిసెస్ ఎవరైతే మనకి కంపెనీకి బయట ఉన్నారో సొసైటీ వాళ్ళు మన కంపెనీలో జరిగే పొల్యూషన్ వల్ల వాళ్ళకి ఏమన్నా హెల్త్ ఎఫెక్ట్ అయితే దాన్ని మనం పబ్లిక్ హెల్త్ కింద తీసుకుంటాం Ganesh, I am trying to say in Telugu also, but you are not going to write. You are not going to write Telugu exam. So, you try to understand. You have to ask your doubt. I am going to ask you in Telugu as well. Okay? Try to understand. Here is the company who are staying outside the company. They are affecting due to the pollution which is caused by our company. We are going to say, పొల్యూషన్ వల్ల బయట ఉన్న సొసైటీలో ఏమన్నా హెల్త్ ఇష్యూస్ అని వస్తే వాటిని మనం పబ్లిక్ హెల్త్ కింద మనం కన్సిడర్ చేస్తూ ఉంటాం ఓకే ఐ డోంట్ నో యూ కెన్ ఏబుల్ టు సీ ఇట్ ఐ జస్ట్ జూమ్ బెట్ యా ఇఫ్ యూ సీ హియర్ వర్కర్స్ హెల్త్ అండ్ వర్క్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంట్ విచ్ ఈస్ అడ్వర్స్లీ ఎఫెక్టెడ్ బై మెనీ కాజెస్ అంటే పనిలో ఉండే వ్యక్తులు అంటే వర్కర్స్ యొక్క హెల్త్ అనేది ఎన్నో రకాల కారణాల వల్ల మనకి డ్యామేజ్ అయ్యే ఛాన్స్ ఉంది దేర్ ఆర్ నాన్ ఆక్యుపేషనల్ హజర్ట్స్ ఆక్యుపేషనల్ హజర్ట్స్ దెన్ ఫిజికల్ ఆర్ అయోనైజింగ్ దెన్ వీ హ్యావ్ నాన్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంటల్ అండ్ సైకలాజికల్ ఎనీ క్వశ్చన్ so i'll just explain briefly once you have received this ppt you can go through it it is just about your additional information so if you see a work workers health and work environment if you see workers health in work environment non occupational hazard ante non occupational ante enti 
తన పనికి సంబంధించిన కానవి ప్రమాదాలు విచ్ ఆర్ నాట్ రిలేటెడ్ టు హిజ్ వర్క్ ఎయిర్ వాటర్ ఫుడ్ క్లోతింగ్ హౌసింగ్ పర్సనల్ హ్యాబిట్స్ అండ్ క్లైమేట్ దీస్ ఆర్ నాన్ ఆక్యుపేషనల్ హజార్డ్స్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ సి ఆక్యుపేషన్ హజార్డ్స్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంట్ కెమికలైజర్డ్ ఫిజికల్ అయనైజింగ్ నాన్ అయనైజింగ్ ఇన్స్ట్రుమెంటల్ మెకానికల్ హజార్డ్స్ ఎలక్ట్రికల్ హజార్డ్స్ బయలాజికల్ హజార్డ్స్ ఎర్గనామిక్ హజార్డ్స్ ఎక్సెట్రా ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ నాన్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంటల్ ఇట్ ఈస్ టాకింగ్ అబౌట్ ద ఫిజియోలాజికల్ విచ్ ఇస్ అబౌట్ ద ఏజ్ ఆర్ ఇల్ హెల్త్ ఎగ్జిస్టింగ్ హెల్త్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ ఎక్సెట్రా అండ్ ఆల్సో సైకలాజికల్ ఇష్యూస్ దీస్ ఆల్ విల్ బీ కన్సిడర్డ్ ఇన్ ది ఇండస్ట్రియల్ హైజిన్ అసెస్మెంట్ now we'll see a dangerous properties of chemicals and their health effects so as we mention the physical hazards which are chemicals and heat atmosphere etc if we see the dangerous properties of the chemicals which will more sly affect the human health in the environment ante mana vaade chemicals vaadi yokka haanikaramaina properties వాటి యొక్క బిహేవియర్ వల్ల మనకి ప్రమాదం జరిగేదానికి ఛాన్స్ ఉంటుంది ఇఫ్ యూ సీ మెటీరియల్ ప్రాపర్టీ హజార్డ్స్ మెటీరియల్ సేఫ్టీ డాటా షీట్ ఎంఎస్డిఎస్ అండ్ ఇట్స్ ఇంటర్ప్రిటేషన్ ఇంటర్ప్రిటేషన్ మీన్స్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ అంటే ఇంటర్ప్రిటేషన్ అంటే ఏంటి ఎంఎస్డిఎస్ చదివితే ఒక్కొక్కరు ఒక్కొక్క రకంగా అర్థమవుతుంది మెటీరియల్ సేఫ్టీ డాటా షీట్ సో అది ఇంటర్ప్రిటేషన్ అండ్ ద మెటీరియల్ ప్రాపర్టీస్ మెన్షన్ ఎంఎస్డిఎస్ ఆర్ డేంజరస్ ప్రాపర్టీస్ and needing attention on the safety schedule 9 of the msic rules 1989 there is a legal requirement in schedule 9 of msihc manufacturing storage import of hazardous chemicals rules msic manufacturing storage import of hazardous chemicals rules 1989 so this is one of the requirement we'll see more in detail in is 105 okay so if you see the occupier of the factory has key this information ready to show uh, to the workers on request for some of the common chemicals and their health effects and of occupational diseases if you see the classification of airborne contaminants what is mean by airborne contaminants when a chemicals are disseminated in air and contaminated they are called airborne contaminants ante indante edaina chemical gali loki కలిసి అందులో మిక్స్ అయ్యి ఉండటాన్ని మనం ఎయిర్ బోన్ కంటామినెంట్స్ అంటాము దే ఆర్ క్లాసిఫైడ్ అకార్డింగ్ టు దేర్ ఫిజికల్ స్టేట్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద ఫిజికల్ స్టేట్ గ్యాసెస్ అండ్ వేపర్స్ పర్టిక్యులేట్ మ్యాటర్ విచ్ విల్ కమ్స్ అండర్ కేటగిరీ ఆఫ్ డస్ట్ ఓకే ఫ్యూమ్స్ మిస్ట్ స్మోక్ అండ్ స్మాగ్ aerosols etc okay now we'll see one by one what exactly if you see a gas and vapor normally a formless fluid which occupy the space of enclosure and which can be changed to the liquid or solid state only by the combined effect of increased pressure and temperature and the gases diffuse the particle size varies from 0.005 to 0.01 microns. And gas and DNT, it changes from liquid to solid states, combined effect of increasing pressure and temperature. Examples are chlorine, ammonia, sulfur dioxide, etc. It talks about vapor, it is a gaseous form of substance. If you see a gas, it is a formless fluid. As it is a formless fluid, fluid vapors vachesi the gaseous form of substance id vachesi manaki vayu roopam undu which are normally in the solid or liquid state which can cause change in the these states by either increasing the pressure or decreasing the temperature or alone 
ఇద్దర్ బోత్ ప్రెషర్ గా టెంపరేచర్ డిక్రీజ్ ఇంక్రీజ్ చేసినా మనకి ఇది దాని యొక్క స్టేట్ ని చేంజ్ చేసుకుంటూ ఉంటుంది దెన్ పర్టికులర్ మ్యాటర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వెల్ ఫెమిలియర్ విత్ ఎవ్రీబడి దెర్ ఆర్ సాలిడ్ చిని పార్టికల్స్ ప్రొడ్యూస్డ్ బై బ్లాస్టింగ్ క్రషింగ్ డ్రిల్లింగ్ గ్రైండింగ్ ఆర్ మిక్సింగ్ ఎక్సెట్రా అండ్ సస్పెండెడ్ ఇన్ ఎయిర్ విచ్ ఇస్ టూ పాయింట్ ఫైవ్ పర్టికులర్ ఇట్ మ్యాటర్ టూ పాయింట్ ఫైవ్ మీన్స్ ఇట్ ఇస్ టూ పాయింట్ ఫైవ్ మైక్రాన్ సైజ్ అండ్ టెన్ ఆల్సో వీ కెన్ సి పిఎం టెన్ టెన్ మైక్రాన్స్ అండ్ ద అదర్ వన్ డస్ట్ ఎ సాలిడ్ పార్టికల్ జనరేట్ బై హ్యాండ్లింగ్ ఆఫ్ క్రషింగ్ గ్రైండింగ్ ర్యాపిడ్ ఇంపాక్ట్ ఆర్ డిటర్నేషన్ అండ్ డిస్క్రిపరేషన్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్గానిక్ ఆర్ ఇన్ఆర్గానిక్ మెటీరియల్ సచ్ యాజ్ రాక్స్ ఎక్సెట్రా ఎక్సెట్రా దిస్ పార్టికల్ సైజ్ ఫ్రమ్ జీరో పాయింట్ వన్ టు థౌజండ్ మైక్రోన్స్ ఇవి వచ్చేసి మనకి డస్ట్ అంటే తెలిసిందే ఏదైనా యాక్టివిటీ రబ్ చేసినప్పుడు కానీ స్వీపింగ్ యాక్టివిటీ చేసినప్పుడు కానీ క్లీనింగ్ యాక్టివిటీ చేసినప్పుడు కానీ ఈ డస్ట్ అనేది జనరేట్ అవుతూ ఉంటుంది దిస్ పార్టికల్ వేరీస్ ఫ్రమ్ పాయింట్ వన్ టు థౌజండ్ మైక్రోన్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ సిఎస్ సైజ్ ఆఫ్ ద పార్టికల్ విచ్ విల్ వేరీస్ ఫ్రమ్ గ్యాస్ టు ఎ గ్రిట్ గ్రిట్ మీన్స్ ఎ సాలిడ్ పార్టికల్ సీ హియర్ సి ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇన్ మైక్రాన్స్ ఫ్రమ్ పాయింట్ జీరో జీరో వన్ టు టెన్ థౌజండ్ మైక్రాన్స్ ఓకే వెరీ ఫైన్ డస్ట్ ఆర్ అ ఫ్యూమ్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వన్ టు టెన్ మైక్రాన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఫ్యూమ్ ఆర్ అ ఫైన్ డస్ట్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ టెన్ టు టెన్ థౌజండ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ a coarse dust which means it is an invisible dust now we'll see what exactly a fumes about solid particles generated by condensation from the a gaseous state generally after volatilization from a molten metals etc now often occupied by the chemical reaction such as oxidation the fume fluctuate and also sometimes coalins the particle size will be 0.001 to 1000 microns examples will be lead zinc or nitrous fumes which is also in a solid particles generated by condensation process then mist it is in a suspended liquid uh, droplets generated by condensation process again which is also the size of 50 to 100 uh, microns then smoke it is also a small gas bone particles resulting from incomplete combustion and also consisting predominantly of carbon gases materials or grouped in a category it is a incomplete combustion of combustible materials then smoke and fog in air contaminants may be present in the form of smog or fog which are not usually encountered in an industrial environment the particle size varies from 1 to 50 micron okay then aerosols so it is also in a colloidal system it which a dispersion medium is a gas and also the dispersed phase in solid or liquid the term aerosol is applicable till the solid or liquid remain suspended in the gaseous medium so these particles in the form of gas they'll be suspended in the atmosphere okay now we'll see the roots of entry or and toxic effects so how a chemicals can enter ante manishi shariram loki ee chemicals anevi enni rakaluga enter avutu untayi ఎన్ని రకాలుగా ఎంటర్ అవుతాయి వన్ ఇస్ త్రూ నాషియల్ ఇన్హలేషన్ ఇంజేషన్ అబ్జార్క్షన్ టోటల్ ఫోర్ వేస్ ఆఫ్ ఎంట్రీ one is first is absorption so what is mean by absorption it is a, a dermal through attack the skin the skin contamination yes through the skin contamination 
So if you are handling any chemicals, accidentally it is fall on your body. So the skin have an absorption capacity to absorb the chemical into your body. Skin absorbs attains its greatest importance in connection with the organic solvents. And the significant quantities of these components may enter the body through the skin either as a result of direct or accidental contamination or indirectly when a material has been spilled on clothes. That's why we used to sell in case of any chemical spill, immediately we have to take out the cloths and we have to clean up the spill completely. And also we suggest that you should not reuse the, the contaminated cloth without any washing. So then take chemical manage one day the panapuru, dani man seri roll not such a question. Using industrial solvents for removing the grease or dirt uh, from the hands and also arm, the source of dermatitis, some uh, solvents penetrates and it also intact the skin and to get into the bloodstream, produce the ill effects on blood and also throughout the body. Some of the chemicals it can enter into the bloodstreams also through our skin. And the chapman lonchi, locally belly, mana blood vessels koda, adi interact a chance of the While manufacturing, handling, and also the spraying the pesticides, liquid splashes may enter through skin and also causes toxic effects. The vapors of the pesticide can either uh, through nose and also the solid or liquid pesticide if taken through a mouth or it can pass through a digestive route also. So it can be go through any system. Digestive route in the sense through oral or through a nausea or inhalation through our uh, air track also it can enter. A volatile material like phenol or aniline, nitrobenzene, chrysol, tetraethyl lead and many other argon phosphorus or argon chlorine pesticides cause a greater hazard through a skin than through a inhalation process. And the absorption through lessing of the Redemis is more rapid than through the intact skin and also the cut skin may absorb quickly. Therefore, the safety gloves, aprons, face shield, goggles and also overalls are always desirable. It is mean that any chemical you are using, you have to use proper PPEs to avoid the effect or exposure with that chemicals. Okay. Now, absorption through stomach tract. Stomach tract in the sense, ingestion are also called as digestive tract. A use of contaminated or dirty vessels and use of eating and also the drinking is the most common route of ingestion. Okay, dirty vessels or contaminated vessels you are using for drinking or eating purposes, what will happen? It can lead to the intake of chemicals into your digestive system. Here what we do is the detoxification affects the liver exits when the ingestion quantity is small. However, a massive dose can lead to the fatalities in the absence of medical attention. So we have a big organ inside our body to do the detoxification. In this is what will happen, whatever the toxins or chemicals you are taking inside, it will try to filter out the, the chemical, our liver. If your liver is not functioning well, so you will not going to survive more. So the simple thing is, whenever you are taking a medicine, if you are ill, so the doses will be above the, the capacity of the liver. So that what will happen then, it will act on the, the disease. Otherwise, the liver will suppress the, the medicine. If you have a tablet, you have a tablet, you have a tablet, you have a liver detoxification capacity, you have a higher side, you have a 
ఆ వ్యాధి అనేది తగ్గుతుంది లేదు అంటే మన లివర్ వచ్చేసి ఆ మెడిసిన్ ని డైల్యూట్ చేసేస్తుంది ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ గోయింగ్ టు అలౌ టు యాక్ట్ అవర్ అన్ అవర్ బాడీ A contaminated food, drinks, beverages should be eaten uh, without washing hands and also mouth properly. The habit of washing hands and also mouth before and after eating is most desirable. And where it is statutely required or separate mess rooms, eating places are provided for his purpose only. Food, drinks, pan, supari, tobacco, lime and also smoking are prohibited in the workrooms. So we should not allow anybody eating these kind of things in the work area because it is having high chance to contamination so ipude ekkadaina kodanu work area lo manamu ee tinubandaralane mana allow cheyakoddu enduku ante avi contamination ki guraye chance untundi next route vachesi absorption through the lungs it is nothing but inhalation or, or also called as respiratory tract a contaminated air is the most important means by which an occupational a poisonous a poisons enter into the body and harmful substances may be suspended in the air in the form of a dust fume of mist or vapor and maybe mixed with the respired air in the case of any the true gases so what will happen inhalation is the a continuous process so it is an easy way of the chemicals can enter into our body and for from 8 hours of working in a day many breathe about 10 cubic meters of air and any poisonous material present in the respired air offers a serious a threat so it is mean that in in the, in the time of 8 hours of working we may consume 10 cubic meters of air if you have any poisonous substances or the toxic substances which are in that air which will lead to serious ill health ante andulo emanna pramadakaramaina padarthalu ginaka unte adi manaki సీరియస్ హెల్త్ ఇష్యూస్ ని తీసుకొచ్చడానికి ఛాన్స్ ఉంటుంది ఐ మెన్ దోస్ ఇన్హెల్డ్ ఫారెన్ మ్యాటర్స్ సమ్ పార్టికల్స్ మ్యాటర్ ఇస్ ట్రాప్డ్ బై ద మస్కస్ విచ్ లైన్స్ ద ఎయర్ ప్యాసేజెస్ అండ్ దెన్ సబ్సిక్వెంట్లీ త్రూ అవుట్ విత్ నాసెల్ మస్కస్ ఆర్ అగ్లూగమ్ అండ్ అదర్ పార్టికల్స్ మ్యాటర్స్ ఆర్ taken up by the scavenger cells following which they may enter the blood stream or be be deposited in the various tissues or organs the true causes will pass directly from the lungs to the blood so there are different kinds of filters in our respiratory tract a nasal muscus and also the scavenger cells which will trap ante okokka place lo manaki okokka rakamaina controls ane unde so filtration ane jarugutu untundi finally adiki manaki mana lungs loki blood stream loki elthundi inhalation easy route of entry of uh, airborne contaminants and possible uh, respirable dust gas or vapor or mist uh, dispersed in the air and also enter in respiratory system through breathing and may reach into the lungs and may transfer from lungs to some uh, sensitive deeper uh, sites also lungs damage may causes this diseases so as i mentioned earlier 
the breathing is the the easiest way for the chemicals which can enter into our body then ingestion how ingestion works the injection i'm sorry injection so injection this fourth route of the entry is the direct injection of the material into the blood stream so anybody can give example for this injection So like QT injection. Yes. It is simple. Snake bite, the injection. Snake bite, sir. Any 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 injection. We we take for uh if you are fallen sick, we'll take different kinds of injections. The injection is nothing but the chemical which are directly injecting into our bloodstream. We'll take the injection through the nose or we'll take the tips. Like insulin, sir. Insulin. Yes, yes, insulin also. All these are injections. Yeah. It's it's like a medication. How the doctor will give an injection? It's the similar way. Maybe a drug or injection or anything which you are directly injecting to our bloodstream. Yes, dips also. By needle, it can be inserting into our skin or muscle or part of the body. And mostly this route is used for injecting the materials into laboratory animals as well as the humans which are fallen sick to give the medication. The intranervous injection, a short circuits and protective mechanism in the body and which resists the material from entering into the blood. So there are different types. They'll do uh, through some of the injection, they'll do through the nerves or some of they'll do for muscle, etc. And pre-employment and periodical medical examinations of the workers exposed to toxic hazards are necessary to detect health effects due to such entry of the chemicals in human body and also a draw uh, inference for engineering and also a medical safety measures. So pre-employment medical examination is very much required because if he is exposed already with the chemicals in previous company, once he came and joined your company, he will start claiming the compensation because of I've joined here. I am getting this occupational disease. To avoid these complications, pre-employment medical examination is compulsory. Now we'll see what are the various toxicity and relevant terms. Okay, if you see the toxicity in relevant terms, we'll talk about various types of uh, terminology with respect to the chemicals. If you see chemicals or airborne contaminants when enter into our body through nose, mouth or skin, as explained above, we have seen the types, they make different types of effects depending on their Con concentration, a time of contact of exposure or body resistance. So how it will expose? It depends on the concentration of the chemical and it depends on the time of exposure and also it depends on the body resistance how your body condition all the things will matter
The toxic means poisonous or hazardous to health. A toxin or toxicant or intoxicant means a toxic substance or poison causing harmful effect. These all are same. Ultimately, it will give the harmful effect to our body. It includes carcinogens, mutagens or uh, tetrogens. Most of the chemicals are poisonous. This mutagens, carcinogens, we'll see in uh, next slide. If you see here, one is acute toxicity. What is acute toxicity? Adverse effects resulting from a single dose or exposure to a substance for less than 24 hours. Acute toxicity is severe anamata. 24 hours kanna goda, akko time meiru dhani ki expose ayina goda, dhani yokka tebra thani di chala ekku gaundu. Okko sari, okko sari peelch na goda, meiru chanu koye avka shundu. Vaatnu maana acute toxicity enter. Then asphyxiant, a substance that interferes with the a trans Port of an adequate supply of oxygen to the body by either displacing oxygen from the air or combining with hemoglobin, thereby reducing the blood ability to transport oxygen. Anybody can give examples of asphyxiant? CO2, sir. Sorry? CO2. CO2 or CO? CO, CO, carbon monoxide. Ah, CO2 is the carbon dioxide. CO is the asphyxian. Carbon yes, sir, yes, sir. monoxide, monoxide. Which will directly interact with the hemoglobin inside our body. Good. Then carcinogen. Carcinogen means a substance that causes cancer. So if you read any chemical which you are using or in your workplace, if it is written as carcinogen, if you are exposing with that chemicals, it can resulting in cancer diseases in our body. Then ceiling limit, it is the maximum permissible concentration of a material in the working environment that should never be exceeded for any duration. Ceiling limit means which is the maximum limit at any case, it should not exceed the limit as a defined. For example, ceiling limit, I can say 10 ppm, 10 parts per million. And a million particles, 10 lakhs air particles, 10% ceiling limit. Any time, any time, 10% will be concentration concentration. That is the ceiling limit. That is the maximum limit of chemical or chemical concentration in the atmosphere. Then chemical hygiene plan, a written program 